Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-0054 090-865-0054 Six two zero seven two. Our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng. Our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com. Our YouTube channel Ministry of Education Kaduna State. Our Twitter handle at kaduna underscore moe or our Facebook page. Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Good day, my learners at home. You are welcome once again to Ministry of Education, Kaduna State Radio Television e-learning. The subject, Literature in English. We are going to discuss a poem titled Ambush under which we are going to see, we are going to discuss it in the following, with, uh, in the following elements. We are going to see the back, definition of some terms, background to the poem, setting, subject matter, themes, language, stroke style, summary, and the, of course, assignment. We are going to take these elements one after the other. Definition of some terms. Well, a whale is a very large animal that lives in the sea and looks like a fish, but is actually a mammal. As you can see it, it, looks, it lives in the sea, it looks like a fish, but not a fish, it is an animal. It feeds on smaller animals, like the fish in the sea. We have the bed. This is food used to attract fish, animals, or birds so that you can catch them as you can see it here. Saber tooth tiger. It has a long sharp uh, object that looks like an arrow. It is like a sword. As you can see it here, this is the animal. This is a tiger. This is the thing we are referring to. Now, by the time it opens it, it scared people away from it. Hawk, a large bird that hunts and eats small birds and animals, as you can see it here. Hovers, to stay nervously in the same place waiting for something. As you can see it here, it is waiting, make, it has seen a prey and wants to feed on that prey. Now it is staring in one place waiting to catch. Vernet, a long knife that is fixed to the end of a rifle, as you can see it, well drawn here. Grills, as you can see these people, is grayish here, as you can see it here. You can only have it in aged people, but sometimes young people can have gray here. Hook, a curved piece of thin metal with a sharp point for catching fish. The poem now, I want to believe with the explanation of the key words there, 
you'll be able to understand the poem very well. So listen attentively. Get your, your pen and your papers ready. I'll read the poem. Ambush by Agbemi Sola Adeoti. The land is a giant well that swallows the sinker with hook, line, and bed, aborting dreams of a good catch. Fishers turn home at docks. Blue Peter on empty ships. All Peters with petered out desires. The land is a Sabbath to tiger that cries deep in the glade. While infants so that home, the grills once snatched their gods from bonnets of tribulation, halting venturous work at dogs. The land is a giant hawk that caught on season disaster as it hovers and holds in space. The land lies patiently ahead, awaiting in ambush. Those who point away from a direction where nothing happens. Towards shore of possibility, I take the poem again. The land is a giant world that swallows the sinker with hook, line, and bed, aborting dreams of a good catch. Fishers turn home at docks. Blue Peter on empty ships. All Peters with petered out desires. The land is a saber-toothed tiger that cries deep in the glade, while in fact shouldered home. The grills once snatched their god from bonnets of tribulation, halting venturous work at dogs. The land is a giant hawk that caught on season disaster as it hovers and hoots in space. The land lies patiently ahead, waiting in ambush. Those who point away from a direction where nothing happens, towards the shore of possibility. The background to the point. In most countries of the world, particularly Africa, conflict, war, lack of employment opportunities to lack of basic necessity, such as food, and shelter is so common that people continue to manage on the fridges of life. The state in most of these countries offers no hope of a better life to the common man. People's experience of the previous year regularly betters that of the current one. In most of these countries, the advent of democratic rule after several years of military dictatorship was expected to usher a new era of opportunities in times of improved social infrastructures, economics, empowerment, and good governance in general. Many years into the democratic dispensation, the culture of impunity associated with the military and institutional corruption continued to hold way while hopes of social and economic improvement of the majority remain largely a mirage. The setting. The physical settings of the poem cannot be easily narrowed down to a specific place, while the images to the poem apparently suggest Africa. The actual place may well be in the poet's part of the continent, which is Africa. The period in question clearly stands out as not the era of immediate post-independence, but most probably be between 1980s and now. The subject matter. The poem is a metaphorical depiction of a nation as a destroyer of the dreams and aspirations of her citizens. The nameless nation referred to as the land is likened to different predatory animals. It is likened to a giant world which swallows other water creatures alive to satisfy its own hunger and sometimes greed. 
and living in its work, frustration, and sadness. The land is also likened to a saber-toothed tiger whose cries send other creatures of the wild away, especially the vulnerable and weaker ones, into run for their dear lives. The themes, the themes of the poem. Destruction is one of the themes discussed by the poet. The theme of destruction dominates the poem. The poet's land, as depicted in ambush, is a place where such opportunities for growth, self-development, self-fulfillment, and hope are lacking. Another theme discussed in the poem is intimidation and frustration. The intimidation suffered by the common people of the land is commented on. In the face of the overwhelming and sometimes ruthless power of the state, the common people are cowed. They feel restricted in their movement and speech. Abuse of power, struck position. The land mentioned in the poem also refers to the people who controlled or hold the power lever in the country. State or society, that is the giant world, the giant hawk and servitude tiger are people in position of power. Despair, hopelessness is another thing discussed in the point. There is much hopelessness in the land. The hard-working one, like the fisherman, has his hope of a good catch, dashed and returns home a sad man. Others who equally experience frustration in the land decide to turn in another direction. But this possibility is again ambushed making the despair complete. We are going to see the language and style. The language has to do with the choice of words. The point is quite a serious one. In terms of subject and treatment, at the literal and figurative level where the characteristics of certain land are described, the seriousness is quite obvious. The seriousness, of course, is seen from the texture of the language and style employed by the poet, that is, Bemishola Adioti. Among others, there is the use of metaphor, imagery, personification, repetition, alliteration, which enrich the gravity of the content. Metaphor. Mat metaphor is a figure of speech used by Bemi Adioti. There are quite a number of metaphorical references in the poem Ambush, beginning with the title itself. This does not refer to the literal meaning of ambush. We know the literal meaning of ambush is hide, wait, and attack. But it refers to the measures, the policies, and actions of those in charge of the land sovereignty, which willingly or unwillingly constitute obstacle to the realization of the dream of the common man. The references to the land, such as a giant world, a giant hawk, and a servitude tiger, are examples of a metaphor in the point. Imagery. If we're talking about the imagery, we're talking about the use of images. If you look at the picture, you will see your, pic your, the, your image in the picture, in the mirror. 
But looking at the mirror, it is not your real self because you cannot talk in the mirror. So it is with the use of imagery. So Bemishola Adoti used images to beautify his work. He made mention of lion, giant, hawk, sharp-toothed uh, tiger, referring to people and not animals. So this is the metaphorical uses of metaphor. The dominant imagery in the poem is animal imagery. The imagery is not merely evoked by the references to some animals, which are world, tiger, and hawk. It derives strength and enhances the aesthetic richness of the poem through the depiction of the animal's action. It's not just mentioning the animals, but the action performed by the animals. Personification. The land in the poem is actually a personification of the leaders of the land in question. The giant world, this is referring to the leaders, but using the animals, it personifies. So it has to do with the giant world, the giant hawk, and the substituted tiger are the agents that have brought the land to her current state. Alliteration. There is the use of alliteration in the poem. Example, swallows the sinker, peters with petered out desires, and land lies patiently. The poet selected use of words highly contributed to the appreciation of the poem. Some of the words employed to help effective delivery of the message are giant, Substituted tiger, shuddered home, bonnet of tribulation, unceasing disaster, and so on. Repetition. Some expressions, there is a repetition, if you look at, for those who were with us as we read the poem, you look at that, there are some words that are repeat, uh, repeated. This is to emphasize on the importance of those words repeated. So some expressions are repeated in the poem. The most frequent of words is the lamb. The other ones are giants and dogs. Then the structure. You know, in every work of art or literary work, most especially when it comes to poetry, that is poem, you find that out there is always a structure there is always a structure picked by the poet to make his work look unique. So from this poem, Ambush, Bermishola Adeoti structured his work that makes it different from other writers. So here in the poem, Ambush, the poem is a 21-line verse which is divided into four unequal stanzas of seven, six, three, and five. For those of us who are with us as we were reading the poem, if you look at it very well, you find out that the first stanza is numbered seven, while the second, six lines. Third, three, and then the last but not the least, five lines. Now, we are going to take it again for those of you who are just joining us. We'll take it again. From the beginning, we saw the definition of sometimes. We saw well. We said it's a very large animal that lives in the sea and looks like a fish, but not a fish. It is actually a mammal, as you can see the picture here. I want to believe some of you have been seeing this in the sea and may think that it's a fish. It is not a fish. It looks like a fish, but a mama. It feeds on other animals in the sea. Bed, food used to attract fish, animals, or birds, so that you can catch them. I know so many of you have gone to the river. Some of you will go with leftover food so that they can catch fish. So as you can see, it, those food taken to the river to catch to, Catfish is known to be birds. 
as you can see it here, sharp tooth, uh, cyber tooth tiger. If you, it has to do with sharp pointed uh, teeth that looks like an arrow. As you can see this, it has a long, this is the teeth of the tiger, a very long one. Mere seeing it scared people. So he, uh, the Bemishola uh, Adioti uses this as what the leaders do to the common man. Mere scaring them, looking at them, scared the people. People run away from them. We saw hawk. We say hawk is a large bird that hunts and eats smaller birds and animals, as you can see it here. This is a hawk. Look at it there. So this is uh, an animal that feeds on other animals, smaller animals, like raptors, hovers, to stay nervously in the same place waiting for something. Now, as you can see this bird, it is standing on a, 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 a one place, looking at maybe it has seen a prey that is food that wants to feed on. So it will stay for a time and then pick whatever it has seen on the ground. Bonnet. It is a long knife that is fixed to the end of a rifle, as you can see it very well. This is the long knife fixed to the end there of a rifle. I want to believe most of you have seen it. Grills, hairy, gray. If you look at, we know normally human hair is supposed to be black, but looking at this, you reach to a, a certain age that it will be gray. So look at, this is what is known to be grayish hair. Hook, a curved piece of thin metal with a sharp point for catching fish. I want to believe this is the local thing we take to the river to catch fishes. You remember in our background, we talked, uh, in our background, we said in most countries of the world, particularly Africa, conflict, war, lack of employment opportunities to lack of basic necessity such as food and shelter is so common that people continue to manage on the fringes of life. The state in most of these countries offers no hope of a better life to the common man. People's experience of the previous year regularly betters that of the current one. When you ask somebody, ah, how is this year? Ah, last year is better than this year. So in most of these countries, the advent of democratic rule after several years of military dictatorship was expected to usher a new era of opportunities in times of improved social infrastructures, economics, empowerment, and good governance in general. Many years into the democratic dispensation, the culture of impunity associated with the military and institutional corruption continued to hold way, while hopes of social and economic improvement of the majority remain largely a mirage. The setting. You remember in our setting, we said the physical setting of the poem cannot be easily narrowed down to a specific place, while the image Images to the poem apparently suggest Africa from the animals used. You will know that the poet is referring to the place Africa. The actual place may well be in the poorest part of the continent, which is Africa. The period in question clearly stands out as not the era of immediate post-independence, but most probably be between 1980s and now assignment before i go i have an assignment for you i have an assignment for you i'll read the assignment it's not just the reading of the assignment make sure you try the assignment one attempt a metaphorical interpretation of the point attempt a metaphorical interpretation of the point two Discuss the theme of destruction in the poem. Discuss the theme of destruction in the poem. I'll take the assignment again. 
One, attempt a metaphorical interpretation of the poem. Attempt a metaphorical interpretation of the poem. Two, discuss the theme of destruction in the poem. Discuss the theme of destruction in the poem. I want to believe you are going to try the assignment. Before I go, I remain A.Y. Rickson. If you want to reach me on phone, this is my phone number. 080-8397-3465. We've come to the end of the lesson today. Stay home, stay safe, keep learning till we meet in our next lesson. Bye for now.